Welcome to Raising the Bar podcast. Sponsored by the Ashmore Law Firm. We're your hosts and siblings, Gary Ashmore and Lori Ashmore Peters. Subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Welcome to Raising the Bar podcast today with our incredibly special guests, Rich and Rock. Rock and Rich. That's it. Short bus special. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So can right. we call y'all the, dyna- the the dynamic duo? Uh, of course. Who's you Batman can. and who's Robin? You can. Well, some people oh, may man. not know who Batman and Robin are. Rich. I don't know who well, the audience is. Because I'm saying. clearly Batman, right? I mean, we're good with that. Oh, see, see He's that might be a problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. He All would right. argue about that. For see, sure. maybe you can do the whole pals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you do things above our heads? That, right. Right. That do that. Luke, awesome. Luke is thinking, who in the hell are Batman and Robin? What are you oh, talking no, about? Oh, no, you don't know who Batman and Robin are. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, so y'all are on our turf We are. Today. Yeah. Um, but is... thanks for having us, uh, first of all. We love it over here. We love recording here, for sure. Absolutely. It's great. We love yeah. having you guys here. For sure. Thanks for having us. Okay, so wait, hold on. So Raising the Bar podcast uh, is sponsored by the Ashmore Law Firm. Oh, yes. Sorry, and yes. that's you and I. Yes. Just want to make that clear. Yep. Brother, sister. Not, so not husband, wife. Right? Yep. Correct. Make no mistake. All right. Yeah. Welcome and to Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You would be surprised. Alabama. You know what? So I'll tell you, years ago when my husband and I, well, at the time, my boyfriend, uh, I mean, he's six four. The rest of the family is, you know, I think, Gary, you're the tallest at maybe 5'8", 5'9". Right. And, and we had some girl that was with us, and she was just like, oh, y'all are all siblings. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we are. And so my husband and I... <laughs> Not well at the time, boyfriend. Uh, we walked ahead of her, and I'm like, okay, let's just screw with her mind. And he planted a huge <laughs> one on me. <laughs> she was like, oh, what are y'all doing? It's like, no, he's oh, not a sibling. Wow. <laughs> Well, no, she that's probably fun. Tell, well, still hey. tells that story. Uh-huh. No, oh, and yeah. you guys are so kind. You you actually sponsor and partner us, uh, partner with us on our show, Rock and Rich. Yeah, yes. of course. Yeah, yeah. Which cool. is really cool. So yeah, thank you. We love it. You know what? Yeah. Being Lebanese, we just we love having fun. We love sponsoring things. We love parties. It's cool. Right. That's we right. We love parties. We do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Lebanese. There's a curveball. I would have. I, if, I, if I was to that. guess. You didn't know that. No, no right. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Mom's first generation here. Dad is what. Second? Second or third? Yeah. Are you yeah. so they're both Lebanese? Uh huh. Really? Yeah. How she didn't speak that? English until she was in third grade. Right. Don't worry, I'm still struggling with it. With the English language, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I still can't read. <laughs> but that's the only language you know. Podcast. And I'm in communications. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> hey man, you make it work. You uh, do. You gotta figure it out. Right? Don't don't tell your employers that. No. No. <laughs> no. That's why that's I don't have an employer. Our I'm little secret. Yeah, I'm completely unhirable. Oh my gosh. Okay, so before we started, you know, I think shooting the video, we were talking about the is straightness a word? Straightness? Oh, straightness. Yes, keeping so. everything straight because of your O C D kind yeah. of straightness. Yeah. yeah. Being lawyer. The, the two bookends are yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's important. It re- it Agreed. is. Well, and I think it's I think it's a testament to who who you are as kind of a person, how you like things sort of. Uh, organized and set up, right? Right. I mean, right. of course. Uh, that, that's you know. I think how it's how do you have that. kids and like things organized? Yeah, yeah. You have to Does kind of learn to go with it. You do. You do. Yeah. You. you it, there's a flexibility there. I think you have to sort of allow it to happen. But um, but I get it. Um, at first, it was a struggle, but I have dogs too, and so my wife, she really struggles with the dogs. Oh, does she? Yeah, she struggles with the dogs more than I do with the kids. Yeah, the fur and you know, right? Of course, everywhere. We ha- we have a ton of fur. All yeah. right, so craziest pet story. Mm-hmm. Let me hear it. No, you. Oh, I, I've got. I mean, <laughs> I'll share mine, but you first. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Henry's I got even a. Know. I mean, yeah. dude, tell her the one about putting him to bed and he got ten million views. So okay, so I did a live. Um, sort of, um, um, what do you what do you call it? It was just, just a, a little video clip. I mean, it was yeah, nothing. I was I wanted to prove to people that you can make any type of video go viral on TikTok or um, Instagram or whatever. And I, I I I thought, okay, what's something easy that I could do twice a day, every day for you know ten or twenty days or whatever, right? And I, I posted about this on LinkedIn. And I, you know, because I own a media company, so uh, you know, it's part of what I do. I represent influencers, and mm-hmm. and people ask me all the time about how to get things to go viral. I'm like, well, if you know certain you know things and sort of parameters, you can kind of you know make it happen, right? 
Well, okay, what can I do? Well, my dog, he is a pit bull mix, and he likes to be covered up with a blanket at night. And so it was something that we would do naturally, right? And his name is Henry. Henry, yeah. <laughs> King Henry, yeah. Um, He's if, a you go, Henry. if you go He's on my so account Henry. now, you could still see I'm it. I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah, you, you can see it at R.W. Harmer, you know, he, uh, on the TikTok. He puts but, him to bed. Yeah, so anyway, I started covering up. Well, the first video, you know, a few hundred thousand. Next one, a few million. The fourth video got 10 million oh, my views. Gosh. Yeah, and, and it got so big and out of control that I had to keep it going because we created fans. Right. Like, people would get used to seeing my dog being covered up twice a day. But it was cool for your media company because you could then say, yes. look, look, you want me to make something go viral? You Here's what I'm capable of. Yeah, you, you could do it. Yeah. And people sort of that knew that. That is awesome. Anyway. Yeah, people sort of knew that anyway. But but that is a crazy, it's just something your dog does naturally. But again. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, no, that natural. is not natural. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when your dog naturally. goes and gets you a beer and brings it back and opens it, <laughs> it's just normal dog stuff. <laughs> You mean your dog doesn't do that either? <laughs> What's the, it's the evolution of dogs. It's just <laughs> happening much faster. Uh, you know, you know but, but seriously, though, that, that, that's a funny story, but it's like, you know, you can you can do stuff like that. It's crazy the that world we live in. That is crazy these days. You know? Man, if we would have had a video and TikTok back when we were growing oh, up. Why, we'd oh, we'd probably yeah. all still be in prison. Yeah. Right, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Are you kidding me? No, yeah. you can ask Gary why he makes his bed every Okay, hold on, hold on. Sounds like my morning. Well, let's come back to that. Hold oh. on a minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> So first, I would like to know, you know, when, first, when someone introduced or said that we have um, this dynamic duo, Rock and Rich, they want to talk with us, we want to partner up and do some things together, I thought first it was Big and Rich. And I'm thinking, oh my God, Big and Rich, of course. <laughs> oh, man, you haven't yeah. heard of those yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, it's Rock and Rich. Well, who are those guys? <laughs> so, so I want you all to share with our viewers, who are those guys? So tell us about Rock and Rich. I know you, you mentioned earlier you've got a media company. Mm -hmm. I think at one point you were an attorney. Yep. Uh -huh. um, so so I, share with us kind of who you guys are and how you all came to be and yeah. go from there. We became friends at an Asian fusion restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, Mario introduced yep. us um, about 10 years ago-ish. Yep. And... We just immediately hit it off. It was kind of weird. I mean, then then we were like, "Hey, Mario, can we go to lunch again with each other?" Now wait, but you're practicing law at this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I'm you, practicing okay. law at this okay. time. Got it. And so, um, and actually, I was looking for Mario put us together because I was looking for a marketing guy. Oh, okay. Here we go. And All so, right. yeah. And so, me and Rich just started to become friends, and then we started insulting each other like friends do, and. Somebody heard us. I, I think it might have been Mario, but it was somebody on Facebook. You know, and, and really quick, I started. So I didn't really work with a lot of law firms that used to work inside one, and I just was, you know, yeah. sort of not excited about working with a law firm and helping. Yeah, them well, but yeah. also Richard, or working with attorneys. I can understand that completely. Yes, it, you, you know, no yeah, offense. It was just, no offense. You know, no, but, no offense. But, not but, taken. Uh, it was, it's good, but Rocky was a little bit different. Yeah, so. I mean, I had really, really bizarre marketing because I didn't want to be that guy in the phone book with the other 500 guys. Right. I wanted to be wearing a gi, holding a machine gun, and a big stack of hundreds. There and we go. Rich just instantly got it and wanted to, to, to go that direction. And so he really got my mm -hmm. phone ringing off the hook, and we did, we did really well for yeah. a long time. For sure. And... That somebody heard us, or I, I think we were fighting over something on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it was on Facebook. And somebody said, you guys should do a podcast. And then somebody else said it. I think Mario was yeah. that, the second person. And we said, dude, why don't we? That would be fun. Yeah, we text each other. So, uh, you know, quick story. So we, 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 I text him and I said, you know what? Maybe we should start a podcast. Because, you know, if you remember, so when, when this is in 2020, so everything was kind of, you know, just 2020, right? Right, um, right. And people were starting to do more stuff like podcasts or whatever. And, you know, it wasn't really that big of a deal. It now, wasn't. The podcast wave had not hit. No, so we were sort of like, okay, let's just, yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it for fun. Because I think nowadays most people are starting a podcast for, you know, business purposes mm -hmm. or, or whatever, a lead or lead magnet or whatever. And I was like, let's just do it because that'll give us the opportunity to, uh, you know, bicker back and forth, but also to right. kind of, you know, be ourselves. And, and plus, uh, Rocky and I, just in transparency, we have access to some really smart, well-known uh, uh, people. Yeah. 
and just, just because of yeah. what we do and, and yeah. what I do. And and Jason Witten was our first guest yeah. um, uh, on our show, and it launched uh, March. So we came up with the idea in October or November of 2020, and then March 21 was our first show uh, with Jason Witten. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the chemistry, because we knew each other, was really, honestly, it was instantly there. Uh, right, Rock? Yeah, we didn't have to act, We didn't have to act, or we didn't have to, like, try. No, We, we were just sitting there, two dudes having a beer kind of feel. Yeah. That's really how it was. still the, is. I think the hardest thing for us, though, was getting used to talking on a mic, because him and I tend to talk over each other, if you can't tell. Right. And, and it was just a different dynamic, because the person listening to the show can't chime in and ask questions. Uh, but our chemistry was obvious, and after you know, I probably twenty twenty five shows, you know, we really got into a really good groove. Um, we started doing uh, really well, and our numbers started shooting through the roof. And you know, uh, Mark Cuban and all these you know different people have been on the show uh, at this point. And yeah, then then nobody, I don't think anybody ever told us no, they would not do it. Everybody was saying yes. It's almost like the name Rock and Rich. People just sort of assume that we were just this big show that had all these big guests. <laughs> it's a great name. I mean, thank you. I mean, yeah, so my wife actually came up with it, and, and I was she? actually against it because I didn't want my name to be a part of it. Um, and nobody ever calls you Rich. I mean, until nobody. Yeah, yeah nobody I was the only one. Rich. Yeah. So, so we did that, and then um, the show honestly it blew up in season two, just completely out of nowhere, and it was nothing. It was nothing that we did. I think we just sort of hung around long enough, and then the guests started coming, and then yeah. something happened with our Facebook to where it went viral. Uh, we had a few viral posts that Rocky would do, and that was hilarious, man. Okay, we couldn't, wait, what we couldn't viral, believe it. What did you do? The what chalkboard the, post. Yeah, the the yeah. It's, I I I wrote. Um, it was just a cut, copy and paste. It was like if you forgot your password and you don't know your. Uh, you, whatever you are, my people, right? Yeah, and you need you need know you forgot your password, but you know your number from eighth grade or something. Like yeah, that. well, Freaking that one. Wow, it it had one million comments. Wow, oh my comments, thirty seven million views in a month. When it goes viral like that, it's nuts. It's insane. Wow. Yeah, it's so, crazy. Wow. So all of a sudden, so what most people don't realize is they think that podcast listeners will go to your social. It doesn't really work like it that. It doesn't have any overplay. Nothing. So our our Facebook didn't really have anything to do with our podcast. We would post stuff, but it, yeah. I think we have like ten or 11,000 followers or something. Like not nothing really that big of a deal because the people that would listen to the show, they, they wouldn't go to our Facebook. I listen to a ton of podcasts. I never go to their social That's media right. sites. Right? Yeah, and I don't even subscribe to most of them. I just no. listen to it. You and just listen I'm, to it and let it go. Yep. And so what happened is, is some of those people started listening to our show. So then it got this like little extra boost. And we're like, what in the world? Dude. How are we getting 200,000 downloads? And the global oh aspect of it was 40, crazy. 42 countries. Oh, my God. Some 42 like, countries, some of which I had never heard of. I don't even we, – we were and, – and people still ask us, how did you guys do it? And we're like, I, I <laughs> <laughs> have no, no idea. idea. No clue. <laughs> Like, and it sounds funny to say that from a media person, you can sort of calculate a couple things, but, you know, throwing your pole out into the ocean, you might just catch a whale. I mean, you just don't know, right? Yeah. And, you know, something that started, um, and I think, I think that something that started in a very authentic way, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, sort of had something to do with it. Part of it, I think, Rich, is our original um, vibe was uncomfortable. It was rock and rich, uncomfortable. That's what we called the show. And, oh, and, you did. Okay. Yeah. And Initially. What we wanted to do was ask people like Jason Witten those questions that everybody wants to ask, but nobody does. Right. And we told them about what, what was coming and that we can edit it afterwards if you don't like it or if we ask about something that you don't want to talk about. But mm -hmm. we want to know about your drug problem and your abuse and your DWI. We want to know about the fight you got in at that bar. I mean, we just right. want to ask all those questions and and also the good questions. Like, how in the world did you manage to, you know, become this perfect whatever actor, athlete, whatever? And and that, I think, was a big part of, of our success because people like to 
they love that. They want to know the real you, not just the famous, fabulous you. Right. And I've always thought, you know, on Facebook, everybody lies about their life. Like, if you look at it, you're like, man, I suck to everybody. But then I'll post about how wonderful everything is. And it's just a big lie. It's a big lie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And you think, and you find out things like, you know, what, what drove Jason Witten to be the greatest tight end in the world wasn't anything to do with his football skills that actually had to do with his abuse growing up. And he was just, he was driven by another factor. So you, we, we even said, I think on the show, he wasn't successful. Be, he wasn't successful in spite of his abuse. It was probably directly because of it. Right. It was a single driver. That him. causes our guests to want to go, let's talk about this. Yeah. Right. And it gets really interesting really fast. I like asking those types of questions. In fact, you know, I, I was emailing uh, Mark Cuban actually yesterday, and I asked him a question because I'm going to start doing some stuff on Facebook or on LinkedIn. And I asked him three questions, and one of them was, what makes you truly happy? Like, What makes you happy, happy? And and I know Mark, and I know he's not going to answer all three questions. So, you know, he's just Mark, right? Right. And he comes back with the one, and he says, when my kids call me dad, that's what makes him happy. I can see it. That's an amazing, amazing thing to say when I had two other questions that he just obviously didn't yeah. answer. Yeah, dismissed. Right. It wasn't yeah, your first wow. billion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's like things like that when you get to the heart of people, I think it just really opens up, you know, your, your world certainly, but also gives you another, another perspective. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. And so I'm just an inquisitive type of person. And it makes them real. It brings it back down to earth that they're human just like us. They put their pants on the same way. 100%. They put their shirts on the same way. And right. like you said, just being called dad makes them the happiest. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? amazing? Who right. would have thought that about Mark Cuban? Correct. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't I would have been said, my first guess. No, I would have said spending that first bill on that airplane <laughs> made yeah. me pretty happy. Yeah. You know, that's what I would have thought about. I know. You know, but then you, uh, then you sort of say, okay. And so taking that same curiosity... And bringing it to a podcast, mm-hmm. I think, is what um, and, and allowing other people to sort of learn from it, right? Yeah. Is sort of a, a big time, you know, sort of a reward for us, I guess, if you will. Yeah, and yeah. The, and the guest list that it's just it's kind of been a perfect storm. The people that we've just ended up with, like the Mary Kay lady that you know ended up getting served and and yeah. sued and and all that stuff that just we couldn't have done that. We tell them the story about the. Because you're better at that than I am, because I can't remember all the details. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting little uh, little deal. So I I know I knew her publisher for her, a book that she wrote. So this is Mary, Mary Kay, Kay Ash, Mary Kay Ash's right hand person. Mm-hmm. Okay, she was in the organization for about 25 years, and um, uh, Millie Brown, who's a local book uh, uh, publisher here in Dallas, uh, she reached out to me and said, "Hey, we'd love to have her on your show." Okay, that's that's amazing, right? I mean, what an honor. And so she had been since retired, and of course Mary Kay Ash, you know, uh, passed away a few years back, and and she was, um, and then she sort of, I think she went into, I can't remember, into the executive director role for the Mary Kay Ash Foundation is what it was. That's right. After she passed away, uh, yeah. After Mary Kay Ash passed away, her right hand person went over there, and it was it was kind of funny because. <laughs> she wrote this book, and she it was it wasn't a tell all, but it was kind of a tell all, <laughs> kind of a tell all. So the Mary, but it was a positive tell all. It was it was all positive. It didn't and one Mac per- on her or anything. No, but one hundred percent of the the books um, proceeds would go directly to the Mary Kay Ash Foundation. What yeah. an amazing oh, wow. thing! Yeah, of course. Well, when she came out with this book, the Mary Kay Ash Company sued her. To stop the publishing of the book. I mean, right? So, so we were like, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so, but we didn't know any of this until after she was on our show. It yeah. turns out. And we were asking her uncomfortable questions. Yeah. Wow, but okay. and, wow. and it turns out that we were the only media that she did. So we released our show. She was actually sued that week. She was everywhere when people were looking her up. We, we were coming up. Oh, my gosh. Hundreds of thousands of <laughs> downloads <laughs> and amazing. views. amazing. And I was hoping that the law firm would, would come after please us. Please sue us. Please, please, please. 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 But they never did. But <laughs> nevertheless, that is still, to this date, our highest 
um, the most popular show. That's just and it wasn't anything we did. No, <laughs> we, just, we were just sitting there Perfect asking time. questions. Oh, great! We can <laughs> yeah. ask, talk to Mary Kay Ash's yeah. right hand. How cool! I thought it sounded boring until we met her, and man, Mary Kay was a spark plug, dude. She, she, she was. was. Was she? She, she, came over, she came over to the studio and she had a pink dress on and you know it just it was mm, kind of a, really cool. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and she took care of her financially too. Her secretary basically is what she was a glorified secretary, and That's she right. mm. had more than enough money. And I appreciated that about Mary Kay. You know, she was notoriously tight. Right. But she took care of her. She sure did. But Knows who brought her to the dance. And I still don't know what actually happened to that uh, lawsuit. I bet, wow. it, I bet oh. it got dropped. There's you, no way that went anywhere. You think? If she's not pocketing any of the proceeds, what, what, what are your damages? Any, right, yeah. what are the damages? Yeah. That's true. Unbelievable. So Dad's anyway. always shared with us, there's no such thing as bad press. That's just make, ding, sure, ding, they, ding. Just make sure they spell your name yeah. right. That's right. He's <laughs> always told us that. Doesn't matter, just make sure they spell your name that's right. That's right. I so love that. Yeah. We never shied away from it. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's why you guys are doing this. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. So, uh, all right, we're going to take a quick break uh, to, well, as you always say, to pay some bills. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess for us, maybe make some phone calls. There you and go. we'll be right back with y'all. Thank you very much. This show is brought to you by the Celebrity Softball Classic. Rocky? I know. CelebritySoftballClassic.org is where they can get their tickets. And we have TK right here. We're trying to keep TK in our back pocket, who runs it because, uh, you know, Rocky, we want to get in. We, yeah, security issues. Yeah, yeah. Not going to happen. Question. Not going to happen. Go to the website, CelebritySoftballClassic.org. It's at Frisco Rough Rider Stadium, which is an amazing venue, oh, it's by the way. Probably the best minor league park in America. Yeah, I, I, I love it out Deep there, Rocky. Nice. The place is going to be full of rock stars. And so if you want to do a sponsorship, that's still available there's still a couple of slots isn't that right tk yeah some sweets available a couple of, uh, about three sweets are available so okay yeah, yeah. all right well, do it hey bunch of celebrities some uh, veterans an amazing organization putting on a great show for everyone and rocky and i yeah we had a blast mm -hmm. last year man we didn't get thrown out till like four o'clock no yeah. I, uh, yeah no you're right <laughs> perfect yeah. it was uh we we uh we paid them Stars off. at five, gates open at five. We have uh pre-game stuff going on. Um we're gonna be donating the house to an unsuspected veteran there. Fireworks will be going off at the end of the night. It's gonna be a whole show. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Check them out. Brought to you by Verve. This show is brought to you by the Celebrity Softball Classic. Go check them out. Okay, so I'd like to welcome our viewers back in. Uh we're here with Rock and Rich. Uh I don't know if they like the dynamic duo uh pun. I but, love it. Okay. Hey. Um, I'm glued to his ass now. So. Love having you guys on our on our show. It's been fun. Uh, all right, so I wanted to first talk about how do people find y'all, and I guess just type in Rock and Rich. Oh yeah, yeah okay, pretty much anywhere. And mm -hmm. are you on all the podcast platforms? And Every then are there one of them. Any separate websites or anything else that you want to direct people to? Or we <laughs> we have our. We don't really use our website, actually. You have a Facebook page? Yeah, we, we do we have do? a Facebook. Okay. Yeah, Rock and Rich Facebook. We're not on YouTube, though. So, you know, and, and we're not like you guys. We're not fancy. We don't have the video stuff yet. So we we just do the audio stuff. It's just okay. much easier. We have faces for radio. So yeah, we're just going to stick. Clearly, right. right. We're going to stick with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So so I guess let's get into your story. Okay. So tell us kind of where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. Okay. Well, where, where I've been, uh, 1996, I... Um, Graduated, 1995, graduated from St. Mary's in San Antonio, became an attorney, did that for 25 years. And I was uh, started off with criminal defense and family law. And then uh, I remember, I love criminal defense because I remember just the idea of getting a good person a second chance just did it for me. And so I could really sell that to the prosecutors. And, I, and a lot of times, it was a clear-cut case, and my client was screwed, but I was able to convince the prosecutor that this is probably not going to be a repeat offender and a repeat client, and let's just give them a shot. Let's just give them a chance, and let's get them deferred. You know, some kind of a, right. of a situation where it won't permanently damage their their career or their, their, life, their right. life. Yeah. So um, I remember where I was standing physically the day I could afford to quit doing family law because it really just was hard for me. And I, I had some really good family law friends and they were cut out for it. They were very good at it. They loved it. They didn't have any, they had a nose for BS. 
and they were just good at it. And so um, I remember what I wanted to do was personal was criminal defense and personal injury. That was my kind of my because I had done personal injury in in law school, and my boss would come through at five o'clock and turn off the lights and send us all home. And I thought, that's that's not what I had envisioned. I, I thought I was going to be under a naked light bulb for 60 hours a week, right. killing myself to make partner, and then retire you know, at, at 70 or whatever. And, and it just, when he said, dude, you can do this, and you can make it what you want is a family, the family will, will make you happy, and this is just a means to an end. So make as much money as you can in the fastest amount of time, and go be with your family. And that was his whole philosophy, and I, I changed my life because of him and because of that. Mm. And then I read Warren, Buff Warren Buffett's um, biography, and he said, we always took our kids everywhere we went. We went on vacation. So that was my philosophy for that, too. And so my goal was to show my kids as much as I could and take them on trips with us. Before that, I thought, man, it's going to be fun. I'll take my wife, and we'll go travel the world together and get the kids plugged in somewhere while we're... No, 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 no. That's not what we're going to do. I'm going to take them with me. So um, in 2017, I got into a car wreck, broke my back, and I had I had, had a motorcycle wreck a long time ago where my ankle was, was damaged, and it was kind of getting worse. So I started getting prescribed pain pills, and it... It started off okay for a few, you know, for a couple of years, but then it started to get to where that wasn't doing it, and then I started needing more. And you don't really realize how fast you're losing ground. You think you're okay, and that I just need to stop this pain. I need to quit. You know, I can't really sit still because my back's always hurting, my ankle. So I got really addicted to oxycodone, and and it was not until I got the oxycodone that the wheels came off and I just got really addicted and I lost control of my practice. My employees loved me. They circled the wagons. They could see that there was trouble. Rich could see that there was issues. I mean, it was just bad. And um, finally, I I was done and, and I, I resigned as a lawyer and the, the state bar was actually really cool. They, they, were, they had seen the, my community involvement, and my pro bono hours were off the chart, and they didn't want to hurt me. I mean, they really right. didn't. And so they allowed me to keep some of the cases that I had in the pipeline, and so I could survive for a little while, cases that I had referred out. And so... Um, you, know, you know, I just want to step in just really quick because I think you know, the character of Rocky... You know, certainly it superseded his addiction. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, in Denton County, there were a number of kids that were, uh, I guess they eat bread if they did, if they were behind Peanut on their... butter sandwiches. Yeah, if they were behind on their lunch money uh, at school, they would only be allowed to eat peanut butter uh, sandwiches. Which uh, is different lunch. than all the other kids are getting. The, right. You know. Yeah, right. because, so because, they, because they couldn't uh, afford... The, the their lunch bill right and so Rocky just without any um, fanfare uh, paid off everybody all those kids um, bills and their debts uh, so they can just eat a hot meal oh. through all of this right yeah like oh, wow. and, and I think okay. you know uh, and when I say like he's done so many things in the community uh, like that that have just gone like I said without fanfare uh, that's just one ex one example. Now that one actually actually did get some attention. Well, I I told my staff don't put my name anywhere on it. I yeah. just want to handle it. And my staff said, you yeah. know, this could go viral. And yeah. what what just what if it started a thing? It was around yeah. Christmas time. So I said, okay, you can put my name on it. And they did. Yeah. And next thing you know, I'm on the news, and it goes yeah nationwide. People just started paying off the loans or the the lunch balances for kids that couldn't afford it. And so, yeah. yeah and, it, and it had an effect. It had it certainly had impact locally, but it also other people started doing it. Yeah. And I think, I think, um, you know, to Rocky's Testament, who he loves a stage and a mic. Like it's never, he's never met a, a <laughs> mic or a stage that, that didn't like him. Right. Right. But to his Testament, that wasn't why he did this. He just, that's just who he is as a person. And I think a lot of people, 
that saw news articles and things about him, they would have these preconceived notions oh of who gosh. he was. But See, yeah, people well, have no idea. I'm, no. A, right. I'm no. a Christian too, and that makes it that much harder to to. Right. I mean, it's like the opposite of a Christian. What happened with the my trust account with the money? It looked so bad. Yeah. But my friends, it was crazy, man. There was very few people that that really attacked me. I had judges giving me notes, lawyers calling me and coming over, and and I mean that people that people were like, dude, this doesn't define you. Don't right. don't let this define you. And so I didn't. Right. And now here we are. I mean, That's yeah. Great. And it was yeah. Cr- it was crazy during the time of the crash. We had this show uh, that was blowing up. And, you know, uh, we had to take a little bit of a hiatus there, but we were still doing live events. And it's almost like people didn't, I don't know if they didn't associate him with the show or there was this. this yeah, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Sure. Nobody was like, oh, that's that guy. Yeah, we didn't. We were okay. like, well, that's so weird because our show was, a, it's a national show. It wasn't mm-hmm. just local. So, you know, sort of probably had a helping hand there. But, uh, yeah. but, um, and then the show still continued to grow during the hiatus and we were still doing live events and emceeing. Uh, um, yeah festivals and all kinds of stuff and yeah yeah and so the crazy cool. story yeah um, but yeah but addiction kicked, okay so so you, yeah you kicked the addiction kicked the addiction in 2020 i checked myself into a to a rehab it was actually a detox i was at the point in this addiction where i wasn't even i, I wasn't even trying to get high i was just trying to function of course and so my dealer got in a car wreck and i'm like this would be a good time for me to go to florida and my wife was like, she had tried and watched me flop around like a fish trying to trying to beat that stuff. And she's like, just go, go. I got your back. Get get to Florida, get clean. And, and so I did. And that was a week in November 4th of 2020. And that was it, man. I got to the detox place and the guy goes, I've never seen anybody conscious with this much fentanyl in their system. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And I said, dude, you got the wrong test. I don't do fentanyl. And he said, yeah, you do. They press it with uh, the oh pills that gosh. you buy. They press it and it makes it 50 times more addicting than heroin. Wow. It's almost impossible to get off of it without medical assistance. So I'm like, well, that explains a lot. Yeah. So uh, that was that. Got got off of it and got clean. Rich had my back the whole time. He never... You could have easily said, you know what, let's just call it a day, and I wouldn't have even judged you for it. I would have, I would have been okay with that. But the vast majority of my friends were just like Rich, and they were like, let's just move on. And they're the unsung heroes. That's Your right. Wife, people like Rich, and, and yep, that's I right. Mean, it took a village. It did. It did. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, but that's. Okay, so what are you doing now in, in addition to the Rock and Rich show? So, well, I got into, uh, man, I got into um, heavy equipment, and I was, you know, I'd buy it at, at auction, make ready, and then sell it. And uh, that works if you can get a good make ready guy, which is the operative word. That's a problem. Yeah. And then um, got a, you know, I did stock market day trading. I just did some stuff that just wasn't, I never did really like it until I kind of came into solar and I really okay. realized solar is a big wave and it's coming because people can they don't realize that you can get a solar system that saves you money and you don't have to pay anything out of pocket and the money that you're paying your utility bill every month can now go towards your solar system which is less than your utility bill and it's going towards an asset that increases the value of your home of course. I didn't know that, and I didn't know. I always thought solar panels were like glass panels yes. on top of your house that would destroy in a hailstorm. You can run over those things with a truck. I had no idea. Hit them with a baseball bat. They're like metal. You can't break them. So anyway, that's that's kind of what I'm working for a company called Circle L Solar, okay. and they're a really, it's a really solid company. They don't try to sell people things they don't need. Their prices are, are really reasonable. I mean, they're. I'm not going to get into all that, but no, it's just, right, it's a right, great right. place to, okay. to for me to be parked, and it's we're doing really well. So thank you for Fantastic. asking. Of yeah, course, man. of course. Yeah, he you're an entrepreneur through and through. I will say that it's like he's always you know that next thing, right? And well, so for that me, that and a survivor, a survivor, of course. Yeah, yeah, right. That's amazing. Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah it's and the it's, grace of God. 
it's fun to see that, like, you know, your friends sort of, you know, hit bottom and then sort of climb back out. Well, my, like, see, but my benefit is now, because I always wonder, do you like me because I'm rich, rocky hair, the rock star personal injury guy, or do you love me because I'm rocky? Right. And now I know right. who those people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. And who they aren't. Right. And so that was fabulous. It was a butt kicking, I'll tell you that, but... And he has like 27 kids that he... Yeah, my kids are... Yeah, they all freaking circle the wagon. How do you have... Tr- tr- how many kids do you have? Eight? 38? Yeah. You try, try saying a bad word about me to my daughter. Watch what happens. <laughs> Eight kids. Amazing. Yeah, right. I know. Wow. I know. And that kind of made the whole monetary thing a challenge. Of course. Mm-hmm. But... Because uh, they're not have, cheap. No. You have to pedal pretty fast. But we kind of had our kids in two separate like categories, like two different waves of kids. So I've got... Four 20 plus year olds and then four that are 12 and under, six, 17 oh, wow. and under. Yeah. With, with the same woman? Yeah. Or? Well, yeah, no. Or, okay. Uh, five of them with the same woman. Okay. Got and it. And the other ones, we, we blended our marriage. Oh, there we go. We okay. had three. That's huge. So, got yeah. it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stuff. So Rocky, is that really your name or it's a nickname? I named myself Rocky in 1977 when Rocky one came out. And I thought the movie was so amazing that I wanted to be that guy. My parents thought, oh, isn't that cute? That'll never stick, you know. Right. And then they heard me announced on the football, uh, on my third grade football team, they announced my name, Rocky, <laughs> and my dad was like, what? It, oh, no. And that was that. 40, I'll be 46 done. years later. Oh yeah. Gosh. That is great. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's so what's your great. legal name? Rodney. Yeah. Wow. Same as we have the same initials, me and Rich. Yeah, R W H. Yeah, so I'm gonna snag okay. his Toomey yeah. bag one of these days. You can have it. That thing's got a broken zipper. <laughs> the zipper Done. Broke. Well, Done they told to tell me, me twice. to fix it. They said that they're gonna need it for three weeks. I'm like, I haven't been three weeks without that bag. And <laughs> I've never seen you without that bag. <laughs> I, I can't go that long like, without my bag. Go buy another one, I guess. You know. Okay, so Rich, we're give us some history on you. Man, I don't even know where to start. Really? Oh, as, my is God. it as colorful as Rockies? No, 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 okay. no, 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 All no. Right. no. I, right. You know, I was born in uh, Binghamton, New York, upstate. You know, I uh, son of a truck driver. You know, blue collar upbringing. You know, Rocky, Rocky and I actually have sort of opposite backgrounds, if you will. You know, his dad started a private school. My dad was a truck driver. There's you know, literally no entrepreneurship in my family at all. I think one of my cousins and a couple people, but. Um, but that yeah. is uh, fascinating. I, I never thought about there's no entrepreneurs in your family. No, not no. Um, and you freaking never work for anybody for more than a couple of weeks. Yeah, I do. I'm unhirable. You are. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, you but know. you've done really well. Well, the, the, I think what, um, I've always had that sort of mentality, right? Even growing up, I knew that it was, uh, you know, a, a little bit different. Like, I just didn't see the value of working per hour like that. And right. Even though, you know, you sort of do that anyway, but um yeah, and I, yeah, I modeled a little bit, and for four years, represented by IMG in New York and Elite in Atlanta, and I did that for four years, and then um, sort of went into consulting almost like right away. Um, after that, uh, marketing and consulting at a com- computer company with a, a guy, and um, and then uh, yeah, really like just honestly, one day at a time. Uh, I would just start getting better and learning my craft more, learning Adobe, learning PR and media, and just, you know, I, I read about 50 books a year and sort of just like learning my craft. I did not go to college, and um, to looking back now, I that probably worked to my advantage. So I was modeling in New York and doing all these things while most people were in school. So so hold on, when you say modeling, are you a La Bear dancer? No. <laughs> okay. I never did that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know. Some people say modeling, never, and they're okay. Never all right. did that. No. In fact, um, no. So I did like stuff for Neiman Marcus, and of course, like, you know, I got yeah, it. that sort of thing. So I did commercials and stuff. So, you know, but I think the, uh, you know, the entrepreneur spirit in me sort of, um, uh, I don't know, it just sort of burned. Uh, to keep doing things on my own, and I went inside of a law firm for a little bit. And it's how you think. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you your don't, brain has to be wired that it, way. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. way. To he put didn't it. ever go. You know what? No. I think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. He just went no. out and started working, you and just, that's what he did. This is what you do. That's what you do. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I do. So I have a twin, an older brother who passed away, and then an older sister. 
Yeah. And so, you know, they, they all worked and, you know, my sister's a pharmaceutical buyer for hospitals and my brother does real estate. Um, and you know, and it's just, I, I don't know. I think it's just a different sort of path you take in life, like mm-hmm. that entrepreneur thing. But Your sister's a pharmaceutical buyer. She works for hospitals. That How did we not make a gazillion dollars on COVID crap, yeah, no dude? No joke, right? I know. Right. Come on, Rich. Yeah, now he's oh, telling they you were, this. <laughs> I think they were like almost laying off at their hospital because it was just such a weird time. Yeah, that's and, right. You know, for all of them, she's in upstate New York, but but yeah. And so I had this consulting firm, and I do a lot of crisis stuff, and then. Um, I did the crisis, a lot of the crisis stuff for Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks, and I've been working with them since 2018. Every time the wheels come off of a big church or a big mm-hmm. organization, Rich's name is somewhere oh. in the media. Yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting uh, game to be playing in, right? Uh, you know, you're 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 sort of uh, um, you're you're invested into the outcome for the client yeah but dude the Um, things that you have said to do when like there was a a a rape case with a pro athlete yeah i expected you to say the exact opposite of what you said and it was it was magic the way you looked at those things and handled those things and ultimately got a result that was livable for everybody involved including the victim yeah i was really blown away by that man i've always told you that but that's that for the record he's really good at that yeah, the, you know what? And my story is not like Rockies. And I think, you know, and I think there's this, for me, I, I have a high level of respect for Rocky to see his, his, uh, his optimism, right? And um, no matter what stage he's at or whatever. And so we sort of feed off of each other like that. And although we joke around on our show a lot and we sort of knock at each other, that is us naturally doing that in our relationship. But I think there's this deep level of respect that I think we both have for each other. Well, you're taking people at their absolute worst and, right. and mm-hmm. making it better for everyone, like you said. And especially yep. in this day and age with social media, I mean, it's everywhere. 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 You can't escape it. And it was hard. Like when he was going through all of this stuff, it, you know, it, it's um, I've never had to consult on my own crises. Mm-hmm. And so like we had this big show and I didn't really know what to do. You know, uh, with with everything that was yeah. How do, we, how do we how do we play navigate? this? Yeah. yeah. So we sort of had to take it one step at a time. There were a lot of legal stuff and <laughs> yeah. some things that were happening. But my lawyer was like, "No, no, yeah. the answer and, is and no." The answer is uh, <laughs> definitely one hundred percent no on that one. You know, and so you just sort of navigate that, right? And anyway, so you know, it's kind of a quick path. And I have a Uncom Media U N C O M dot Media is the name of my firm. Um, and yeah, that's what I do. A lot of crisis stuff. Um, yeah, that's really uh, corporate communications is, is where I st- I'm an entrepreneur, but I stay in my lane. And, know, then, and, and then you've picked up a, a, a SpaceX. I know oh, I keep Earth calling X. it SpaceX. Earth X. Earth X. I wish. <laughs> I'd love to do that. So I'm actually a podcast a, a host on two other shows. So the, what in East Dallas is going on is a, is a show in East, is a community-based uh, podcast. Uh, that I started with Camille Libby, uh, who's my podcast uh, co-host. Uh, so we own visiteastdallas.com, uh, where we live, and uh, we have a magazine coming out in 2025. And so we're super excited about that. It's already getting, we've already sold all the premium spaces, actually, um, in the magazine, which is absolutely re- remarkable. We're recording this in September of 24, r- right today. Mm-hmm. And so we're super excited about that. Everyone's excited, and I love doing community-based things like that. Um, and then I'm also a host of the Earth X podcast, which is a podcast that is, um, it's called um, the Pro Planet, po- Earth X Media Pro Planet podcast. Um, and I just host the show uh, with Melinda, uh, who's the co host. And we focus really on environmental and sustainability issues. And we interview people from all over the world. Uh, and we just, that launches actually in about a month, I think, that whole thing. And the intent is to build the largest. A podcast network exclusively focused on the environment and sustainability um, in the world. And we're well on our way. And it's amazing. We've recorded a bunch of shows, and EarthX is a pretty cool organization we right down to, the street from here. Okay, right. We need to work my solar angle into EarthX. I hadn't even oh, thought there about you that. Go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. 100%. Yeah. 
I mean, and and that's a that's a whole topic, like the the whole thing. Because I was one of those. I'm I'm not you know one way or the other. We need oil, but we need solar. You know, you can't just take away oil and everything that oil provides and gas. Turn four. Yeah, you have to sort of work your way into it. And there's this transition period. So there's companies and people that are doing amazing things around the world. And so I'm lucky enough to uh, host that show and be a part of that as well. So yeah, of course, mm -hmm. good. That that's amazing. I mean, because when I first met you guys, it was you know rock and rich, and it was fun, and it was funny. But damn, <laughs> <Yeah>. no, <laughs> really, no. Hey, damn is all really, I can say. Listen, we really appreciate y'all sharing with us kind of some of y'all's backstory and peeling back some of the layers of the onion, yeah. so that people can get to know who Rock and Rich really are. I mean, uh, y'all really are the folks that they hear, mm -hmm. and yeah. and the joking and the and the amazing talent that y'all bring on an interview. But it's also Thank nice you. to know that. You're real folks. You know, you sit yeah. here and, and you're like uh, the rest of us. For um, sure. All right. You wanted to lighten things up a little bit? Oh, gosh. Well, it gets yeah. lighter. Um, it does get lighter. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> On that note, Seriously, I think I'm going to blow my brains out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything more? Are y'all done? <laughs> We're done. We're done. <laughs> All right, so to lighten things up, we've got a few questions for you. Well, no, actually, I want to get back to y'all asking Gary the question, why he makes his bed every morning. Oh, wait, why do you make your so bed? So that goes back to the dog stories y'all were talking about. And not that I'm a... You I, love dogs. I do, I do. I'm not a pet hater in any way, shape, or form. People ask, do I have a dog currently? I don't, because I live by myself, and I'm never home. So it wouldn't be fair to the pet, number yeah, one. Yeah, good. Um, so... Lori had this dog back in, I guess, grade school. We were all, you were in grade school? She was my, I, my when I was 10 years old, she was my birthday present. Oh. Right. A poodle that I named Peaches. Mm -hmm. A Did, toy poodle. Okay. Just Did a, you bond, like, major, major bond? She, she bonded. Oh. She and Gary bonded. Just a mangy poodle. <laughs> and this is the kind of poodle where, you you know, you take them outside, they come in, and they're, they're, rubbing their butt on the shag carpet <laughs> to clean themselves. Yes. Just a nasty, just <laughs> awful. Hey, now, that's, oh that's Gary's perspective. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so I would go to school, I'd come home, and this dog would be planted, its ass and all, on my pillow <laughs> every day when I got home. See, that's a problem. It's a huge problem. Yes. That's a problem for me. The yeah. dog's licking themselves, mm -hmm. rubbing his ass, cleaning mm -hmm. it. After Not that there's the anything wrong with that. No, that's what dogs do. And, and, and mm -hmm. some dog lovers let them lick their face and kiss them and do all that stuff <laughs> afterwards. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. So that taught me a lesson. And, and Lord, before Lord's, I would... Lori's been laughing about this for like 30 know, years. I before know. I would leave to school every morning, I would make sure that the covers were pulled up over the pillow <laughs> tucked in under so she couldn't get to it and I'll be damned if to this day I make my bed every single day. You should be thanking every her. His so tongue is out, out on his pillow <laughs> after the dog's ass oh has been on it. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, right. Right? I Awful. was expecting some Navy SEAL reason why he makes his bed every no. day. <laughs> it's no. It's just amazing. You ass. get your stuff Just so the dog's oh, ass no. doesn't touch. damn dog. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, that is rich. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, that's it, nice. it was fun growing up with Gary. I bet. It was great doing practical jokes on him. That's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. we continue to today. She was the youngest child, daddy's little girl, could do no wrong. <laughs> uh -huh. And to this day, we still have to live with that. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. That's funny. That is that's awesome. Good stuff. Okay, so pet story for you? Oh, man. I had a dog in... Law school, and then for the first few years I practiced, and her name was Adrian, and I had her, I got her in undergrad, and we were so close, like, I took her everywhere, I just, she was half chow, half shepherd, so she was this okay. big, amazingly beautiful, white, German shepherd chow looking dog with this, just the most amazing, so, but after she died, it was really hard for me to bond with another dog i still haven't been oh, able wow. to I really yeah mm. i just can't i can't i don't feel the love man i get it That's after tough. peaches died i couldn't do another dog for a while so we got ferrets that's mm. not a bad idea ferrets are awesome they i smell. always wanted one of them. the boys smell i always wanted we had two uh, females they were great yeah i always wanted a ferret maybe i'll do that 
Gary, I'll get you a ferret. No, I'm Gary okay. would like one. I am okay. <laughs> I'm good. I, my springtails are enough. They... That's it. I'm good <laughs> enough with that. That is great, Gary. Oh my God, he's too funny. Uh, all right. So, greatest pickup line you've given or received? Oh boy, man. Okay, well, you were a model, really... so you had to have oh, you something. You had to have a lot. Right? No, actually, so I didn't. Um, I've never been one to go up to, to a girl, um, like that. I, I wouldn't know if a girl was hitting on me or not. I did have a girl that one time in Charlotte, North Carolina, buy me a slice of pizza. And I just thought she was nice. I didn't know. I don't know. Oh, isn't that nice? nice. God, That's so dude, sweet. Really? I Could mean, I... really is right. She's trying to freaking reel you in. Yeah, I know. You but... think through the pizza. Bye. <laughs> That's exactly what I <laughs> That's <think>. exactly what you <laughs> <laughs> oh How did you get married? Well, I was going to say, right. How'd that happen? My, she my, drove my, that train. Yeah, my buddy introduced <laughs> us in that, you know, and, and it, we just sort of hit it off. Love at first sight, right down the street at Albanese, actually. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Very uh, nice. But that was, uh, yeah. But I didn't have any pickup lines. And plus, I was like, kind of four drinks in, you know, seven and sevens. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty, that Slicks makes everything wheels. a little easier. <laughs> okay, At least so you think it's easier. So share your line. Go ahead. Crumpled or folded? Mm. That was it. Folded. Yeah, folded. Even me. Yeah. I'm all about folded. I yeah. had no idea mm. what it meant. Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Mm. Well, hey, I'm a crumple those, guy. For those listeners out there. You're a crumple guy? The, well, and then it, it turned into, hold on, how many sheets? Oh, I'm at least like 12, 15. <laughs> 12 or 15? Oh, you yeah. get three when you go to certain places <laughs> yeah. and they're handing, they're doling out the sheets. Yeah. You'd only yeah. get three. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Well, like, uh, what's going to be funny is if the listeners are, what are they talking about? Correct. So don't tell them. Oh, we're not going to tell them? No. We're not going to tell Have them. Have you ever been to China? About. No, but I've been to Thailand. They give you cardboard. China, <laughs> they will literally give you one. Two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. And then if you try to use more, they'll yell at you. There's an old guy standing there who yells at you. It's bizarre. I like Thailand because it's got the. Uh, well, no, then we're going to give it away what it is. So, yeah. Okay, crum- we're not going to tell Crumple okay. or folded. Right. Yeah. yeah. Crumple I mean, I'm folded. impressed that y'all, I mean, y'all were right on that one. Oh, yeah. That's easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we've been around. Easy. Um, <laughs> At least it wasn't crepe paper. I, I, Some I, places but, give you crepe paper. I, yeah, right? It is. Ugh. I want to tell you about the pickup line because when I was in school, I would have definitely tried a pickup line because I was all about girls. <laughs> but my buddy, who really wasn't anything to look at, he would just reel in these amazing women all the time. I mean, right. he didn't even have to try. Awesome. So I just watched him. And what he did was he dipped. So he would just put in a big dip and just walk up and start talking to them like they were his friends. And there wasn't any pretense, and it wasn't like I'm trying to get in your pants. Mm. You know, it was just, hey. What's up? And I got that from him, mm. and it's a real, it's a winner. It works because, wow. you know, you're not trying, I don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to do anything. Yeah. And you got to kind of convince yourself that that's really you really aren't trying to do anything because they right. see right through it. And you can sense it from a wow. million miles. Yeah. Yeah. Women are ninja, right, Lori? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh really? Yeah. We know it. Oh yeah. Oh, too. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. No. So did you start dipping? Oh, I've been dipping the whole time. Oh, you, oh, you have. Okay. Yeah. He never right. stopped dipping. <laughs> but but my one of my wife's good friends' husband tries to hide it and like she'll put it on his pillow with spit cup, you know, and. Her friend said, God, I wish my husband would just man up and just dip if you're going to dip. Right. Like Rocky does. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm not here to impress anybody. And yeah. so if you don't like it, you know, we'll talk about it, but I'm not going to stop. So do you I have a this. cup? No. Do you have a specific cup that you no, use? No, that All would right. be gross. Yeah. He swallows it. I can oh. do. Well, I, I try to, yeah, I try to spit it if I can. But. So I had, we had a roommate in college that dipped, and, and this is probably what taught me to never dip. And he left crap everywhere. Dip cans, cups. Oh, he see, used plastic that, bottles. I'm not that guy. Okay, yeah. so he used a Coke can a couple of times. Oh, oh no. I know where this and, is going. Oh, yeah. Gosh, oh, awful. No. And I'm thinking, oh, is that my Coke there? Oh, oh my God. No. I like no. to kill him. If he wasn't three no. times my size, I would, I'd be less one roommate. Oh, my gosh. It was gosh. awful. Anyway, so I've, I've never had the desire to dip. We, I went to a Tate High School in Cantonment, Florida, and we, it's a farm school, really. We had, uh, yeah, it was like a farm school, and we all had our dip cups on our desks. 
That's, like, just that's nasty. My kid, wow. listen to this. My kid, Jet, was sitting there watching something and he couldn't look away and he had to pee. So he peed in a bottle. And I came in there and it was that. Uh, it was a drink you can only get in, uh, like, Cayman I, Island. I don't even know where this is going. It's oh like this God. great drink. Oh I can't God. remember what it's called, but it's in a dark green bottle, so you can't tell. Uh-uh. So I picked that thing up, and I took a big pull. Oh, no, you did not. I went, dude, I, I looked over at Jet, and I said, dude, I swear this tastes like piss. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughs about that to this day. Like, oh, uh, on that note, that's the end of the podcast, Racing the Bar. Yeah, no, yeah, we're done. Oh, oh, yeah. wow. Shut it down. Or, <laughs> Shut it down. Oh, he had his God, great. Rocky. Yeah, he started, uh, he just started laughing. And then that was, oh, I my knew. God. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's All right. right. That's the Gosh. same kid who faked a head injury with fake blood and laid there unconscious. I mean, it, it, he's pretty hardcore about stuff like that. Oh, Got to watch gosh. that one. Okay, yeah. I never did that bad of a joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, my wife put him up to it. Like, lay here and we'll go get Dad. Oh, I was taking my. a nap. And, I, and they were like, Dad, Dad, Jet hit his head. And I come in, he's laying there in a pool of blood with his head. And I'm like, come on, buddy, stay with us. Come on, come on, stay with oh, us. Oh, my gosh. And I look over at my wife, and she's just looking at me. And I look over, and I'm like, call 911. <laughs> oh she, and, she, and they're still looking at me. And so I poke him in the ribs, and I'm like, God, I'm still going to fake a heart attack in the backyard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh I still haven't God. done it. I'm oh, waiting for that. That's a dish best served cold. I'm about to do it. That is, so all I ever did was short Golly. sheet your sheets. Yeah. Short sheet well, my no, sheets. Well, no, actually, we made you, bar- so Gary and I, Gary was out one night. It was a Friday night. My sister and my dad and I were at home, and we wrote him a sweet little note. Hey, you've been out a lot, homework, school, you know, would you like us to make you breakfast in bed in the morning? And, you know, the first note we get back is, oh, y'all are so sweet. Thank you so much, but I have to get up early. I've got to get to work, you know, maybe another time. The second letter sent uh, was, y'all think y'all are so cute. I was up for hours cleaning sugar out of my sheets because we went and got Rice Krispies because he would always have a bowl of Rice Krispie treats with some sugar. So <laughs> we sprinkled Rice Krispies all over his bed. Oh, Short oh sheet his God. bed with sugar. That's and not, he, that's he not was funny. Pissed. No, no it, it was not he was at all. so mad. At all. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> she's still so laughing now, at me. Oh, Yo, listen, me. there's crap she's still laughing about. You're I right, know. 30 years. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's it was worth it, man. We're, you, take one for the team. You should have a whole podcast that's de- oh, dedicated to that. I guess, Things right. we did to the you know Gary what? No, podcast. So I had a boyfriend that we Oreo cookied his Camaro, because that was just like a funny thing to do, and I didn't realize when you Oreo cookie someone's Camaro that like ruins the paint. Oh my oh, god! I didn't know that either. Now he, he had a does. spotted Camaro. <laughs> he oh did. man, he I did. bet he was beyond mad. I mean, <laughs> You're like, oh, so who did that? So note to self. I mean, how, who? Yeah, he just man. found out about it just <laughs> right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who that was? He's coming back. Yeah. That's so funny. All right, listen. I know you guys have things to do, places to go, people to see, autographs to sign. Yeah. Um, can't thank y'all enough for for joining Lori and I. Uh, on Raising the Bar podcast. It's a ton of fun. Hosted yeah. by the Ashmore Law Firm, of course. Yeah. Um, would love to have you guys back. Would certainly like to continue the the relationship and the synergy and the partnership on whatever it is we can do for y'all and whatever we y'all can do for us. Let's I know. Do it. We're in. Yeah. We are in. Yeah. Thank right. y'all. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else you want to say in parting words? Nope. I think that's it. Mic drop. Although we should have dropped the mic after your story. <laughs> oh right. Gosh. That's it. Yeah. Which one? Clunk. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so Thanks, much. Guys. Appreciate it. See y'all. Thanks to our sponsor, the Ashmore Law Firm. We specialize in probate, estate planning, family law, guardianship, personal injury, and civil litigation. You can find us at ashmorelaw.com. Or by calling us at 214-559-7202. Again, that's ashmorelaw.com. Or calling 214-559-7202.